Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Diego Granados and I'm a product manager. In today's video, we have a special guest with us. I'll be interviewing a senior product manager from Cisco. He's going to tell us what it's like to work at Cisco, the challenging things about working there and different roles you can find in this company. And stay tuned until the end because he's going to tell you what he looks for in resumes when hiring product managers. And if you're new here, don't forget to check my other videos and hit the subscribe button because my goal is to help you get into product management. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I have a very special guest with me. I have Omar Tehab, who is our Senior Product Manager for Cloud Networking at Cisco. And contrary to what you can think of Cisco as only routers and switches or access points, Cisco has a ton of other software and cloud offerings. And so I, we have the privilege today to have Omar with us. And um, I've known Omar for a long time now. Uh, we were buddies when I was at Cisco working there. And so it's awesome to have you here with us, Omar. Uh, I'd like to start with, you know, just getting the audience to know a little bit more about you. So why don't you tell us about yourself? Yeah, um, before I do that, I just want to say, hey, Diego, hey, everyone. Um, thanks, Diego, for having me on. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. And everyone, watch the full thing and watch exactly what Diego is showing you because the tips that you will learn either from my talk right now or from the past videos that Diego has had or the future ones, they're key. They're gold nuggets here and there. Um, but yeah, so who, who am I? So my name is Omar Shihab and I like to think of, about myself as a curious innovator. And I say innovator because when I was in high school, I built a robotic arm thinking how it can help people in the future. I wanted to work on the latest and greatest things, and this has been the trajectory for me, for my life, basically. I did my bachelor's degree in Beirut, Lebanon, and then I did my master's degree in electrical engineering in Montreal, Canada. Again, wanted to work on the latest and greatest, and at the time, the latest was 4G LTE, and so started working with Ericsson to help AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile build and maintain their 4G LTE network. And I liked what I did and I was good at it. So Samsung picked me up as a consultant. And so I did that with Samsung for another year. But then I was starting to think, well, what else is there in the world? What else can I do with my um, capabilities or my skills? And so I opened up my own company and I called it BP Stores. Don't ask me what BP Store stands for. It, it stands for best prices. Hey, it was just an experiment and, and I just wanted to see what I can do. So the, the company was buying stuff wholesale from Amazon, from Walmart, from Target, return stuff, and then selling them online to customers all around the world. And from there, I thought I can do something besides engineering. I like being an engineer, but again, I wanted to try something new. And so I thought, okay, well, let, let me go into business hardcore and let me do this uh, straight. Um, so I did my MBA at Fuqua. And this is where I met Diego and um, some very awesome people. After Fuqua, um, I thought, okay, well, I can go into a completely business role and let go of all my existing skills as an engineer, or I can go into a product management role where I would leverage my existing skills as an engineer, as well as my business skills that I learned from Fuqua and my company and marry them together to be a product manager. And what better company to do that at Cisco? Did you hear about product management before the MBA or was it something that you discovered during the MBA and, and how do you find about it? Yeah, so so I had not heard about product management before uh, Fuqua. And whenever I saw the word or the acronym PM, I always thought project manager, project manager, project. I don't want to do project management. And so I came into Fuqua thinking that I would be a brand manager. But then I started thinking, like, I have this experience. Well, well, what should I do with it? And I saw you, Diego, going into a product management internship role. I'm like, hmm, what, what is that? And so this fit the, the, the bill right away. Existing technical skills plus, plus business skills equal product management. And so it, it, it was my calling. And immediately when I started finding, well, when I found out about it, and that's the trajectory that I wanted to be in. 
And, and I would add for all of those of you who are just starting to discover product management, uh, the tech club and, and all these other technology groups at different schools were the ones that helped us to understand more about product management. So definitely check out the resources at your school. And if you don't have a club, it's always a great time to start one. I get asked a lot if you need to be an engineer to, to be a product manager or to be a product manager or a company that is technical like Cisco. So let's start there. Do you need to have an engineering background or technical background to be at Cisco, to be a PM? And then I'd love to start getting into, okay, what, did, what do you do at Cisco? So, so I would love for you yeah. to share that with us. Cisco is a very technology driven company. That's not to say that product managers need technical experience. There are two types of roles, if you think about it. There is an inbound product management role, and then there's an outbound product management role, right? Inbound product management role, you're working with engineers, you're working um, with the technology very, very, very deep. Outbound product management role, you're working with sales, you're working with marketing, you're working with legal. Some companies, both of these roles are tied into one, kind of like Cisco. Other companies, they're two separate positions. And you have the inbound working with engineers and you have the outbound working with everything external. So you can imagine that the inbound PM needs to be much more technical than the outbound PM. At Cisco, yes, I do dig into the technology. I do work with my engineers. I do work with uh, the people that are entrenched into the coding of the solutions. At other companies, you may not need to do that as much. I see. So it seems that it, it depends a little bit on um, the type of role. Sometimes it may be more of a PM technical role. Sometimes it will be more mm -hmm. of a business PM role. And, and so going down into your particular role as a senior PM for, for the cloud business, what exactly do you do? What is it to be a senior PM? What is it like to be a senior PM at, you know, at Cisco in the cloud space? Yeah, so, so let me talk about my role specifically. And what I do is I have a solution that helps customers connect to the clouds. And when I say customers is, it's large businesses, enterprises. So think about customers that want to connect to AWS or Azure or JCP, right? They can connect through internet, they can connect through MPLS circuits, they can connect through um, AWS Direct Connect or um, Azure Express Route. And if you don't know what these are, they're just connected to the platforms, almost like a second internet. But all of these methods have problems in their own way and so what i'm creating is a different way for customers to connect to the clouds in a faster more reliable um, sla based uh, and cheaper way um, and so it's, it's all about connectivity this is one project that i have <laughs> i do have others as well and so the others would be um allowing customers to build their network in the Azure, in the GCP, in the um, AWS side of the house as well. It, it sounds really interesting. And it also sounds that there's a lot of interaction with these different partners, uh, the different uh, cloud you know, service providers. So what does the day-to-day -day look like for you? I know it may not be you know, the classic day-to-day -day standard PM day. That's a common question as well. And the answer is it depends. But for you, what does the day-to-day -day look like? That, that's a very good question. And, and it does, it does shift week by week. It does shift day by day. Like I'll give you an example today. Today, I spoke with my marketing team. I spoke with my legal team. I spoke with my manufacturing team, as well as my engineering team and a few others and in other internal product management meetings. You, you've heard of the phrase of a product manager is a mini CEO of a product, right? At Cisco, this is 100% true, if not 1,000% true. I am the person that is um, responsible for the product end to end. So I do pricing. I do, um, I speak with my marketing team to work on marketing collateral. I speak with my sales team to sell the solution to the sales so that they can sell to the customers. I speak with um, the manufacturing team to give them a heads up to make sure that we have enough enough inventory to uh, meet the customer's demand. 
let alone engineering as well. We speak with engineering a lot. You're the CEO of the product. You need to make sure that everyone goes along with you on the strategy and works on the same um, um, path almost that, that um, you've set for the product. That sounds definitely challenging, but also sounds very rewarding once you are able to successfully launch the product, right? And so uh, question about that. Would you say that the most challenging thing to work as a PM at Cisco is being able to manage and bring together all those teams? Or is there you know, certain things that you consider uh, the most challenging things to work as a senior PM at Cisco? Yeah, I, I definitely do think that the, the challenging part is learning the different languages. So <laughs> I'd, I'd almost joke around that at the end of my stint in this specific product, I'm gonna have a legal degree as well as an engineering degree, as well as a marketing degree, a support degree and an operations degree, working a lot with operations right now on how to sell the solution, uh, the, the nitty and gritty details of, okay, well, we need to have this SKU and not this SKU. The, this is one of the main uh, um, challenging parts. However, like you said, um, another challenging part is to convince everyone that the direction that you want to go to is the right direction. A product manager doesn't have authority over engineers. We do not have authority over legal. We do not have authority over support. However, the beauty of it and, and uh, the, what separates the good product manager from the okay product manager is you would know what drives a specific person to um, implement something, right? And so, uh, for example, sales. What's the incentive for sales to sell your solution? Well, yes, there is. What does it mean for the customer? What did, how how much cost effective it is? How um, faster it is? What what's the brand implementation? But also think about the salesperson themselves. Like, what is their incentive? They need to meet quota, right? And so, keeping the incentives in the back of your mind knowing what drives or motivates a person will, will help a lot. Um, and so whenever I have a discussion with anyone, it's always in the back of my mind. What do you think makes you and these other PMs successful, uh, particularly at Cisco and maybe, you know, in general, successful PMs? I attribute it to my success is that, um, Number one, I'm very flexible. I don't have like something in my mind and everyone needs to follow me and it's, it's my way or the highway. This is not how people should operate. You need to be flexible. You need to know that you don't know everything. And so making sure that um, you hear the other party and if they have a point, adjust uh, because this could make or break the product. So, so being flexible, this is an important thing. And with flexibility comes, okay, well, who should I trust? And knowing who your proponents are, who the subject, subject matters are, who are the people that you need to listen to um, is, is what I would say um, key in making sure that um, you build the right product the right way you have to make sure that you know your customer inside and out. You need to know what motivates the customer, what the pain point of that customer is, what the challenges of those customers are. It's really important to put your mind in the customer's shoes and have empathy to think about them, really what's going to motivate them to adopt your solution. Why did the customer hire this specific product to do? If you can answer this question, then you may have a good product. If you can't answer this question, it's not going to sell. That 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 is really interesting because many of these, um, you know, m many of the articles and things that you can review about product management, they all talk about the you know the classical skills like uh, you know influencing others, working cross functionally, being yeah. able to be technical, but having that flexibility and knowing the you know who are the experts, it's also very important for you to know how to execute and how to execute fast, right? And, and how to execute well. So uh, really interesting there. And, and let me ask you a question about your transition into Cisco and, and whether you believe people should, should follow something similar. And that is, uh, 
Cisco was your first role as a product manager after your MBA. Do you think that in general, is it a requirement that people get an MBA to get into product management or, or um, is it just one way? How does it look like at Cisco? I, I, no, I, I, I don't think that there is only one way and it's a direct path, MBA and then product manager. No, I, I definitely don't think so. Um, a, a product manager, yes, has to have knowledge about business. But that, that can be achieved through many different ways, not needed to be a, a, an MBA. You could have your own company and you learn the ins and outs of operating a business um, um, that would help you become a successful product manager. It's almost the same skills, it's almost the same learning. So why can't we take that specific role and then just change the title to be product manager? Um, so in short, no, I don't think MBA is required. However, it does help things and it does help um, um, to, to have an MBA to get into product management role, especially at large companies kind of like um, Cisco, um, Microsoft, Amazon, it helps. But again, not a requirement. And as you think of, you know, the things that you learn during your MBA, but also as you think of your own career at Cisco, um, mm -hmm. You know, like I said before, there are tons of skills that we can list about product management. But what do you think of the, let's say, the top three skills that somebody who's looking at Cisco as their next step to become a product manager? What are those top three skills that that candidates should bring to to the resume, to the interview, and just you know, in general, as a product manager who wants to apply at Cisco? Okay, so so um, I tell you what I'll, I'm going to tell you what I thought were the key skills and I'm going to tell you what I look for in the resumes right now. So what I thought uh, was number one, leadership and leadership can have multiple flavors, um, influencing without authority. So this is what I thought. What I look for right now in resumes is yes, I, I do look for influence without authority, but you can't really see that in a resume too much. Um, so it, it, it's through, interviews that you can really uh, understand if that pro person led without authority. However, if we break down leading with, without authority a bit more, so how does someone lead without authority? Well, they need to be collaborative. That's something that I look for a lot in resume. I don't, I don't look for a person who says, um, I, 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 there has to be some we, or what did you do to the broader companies? For example, a person who has trained a person or a trained an organization or um, uh, a person who has taken a group and changed to doing something else. These are some things that I look for. So number one, collaboration. The second thing that I really look for is um, a, a person who wants to try something new. So for example, if I were to see that a person was in the same role doing the exact same project for five years, well, that signals to me that this specific person doesn't want to learn something new and so may not be the best fit for a product manager. Because like we said earlier, product managers have to learn new things um, every single day, legal support operations, whatever it is. So if a person doesn't have that energy, doesn't have that jive to learn new stuff, they may not be the best fit. Um, so that's the second thing. Uh, the third thing is around impact. Have a impact um, that signals to the, the interviewer or the person who's reading the resume that you want or you are contributing something and this is something that is driving you towards um, success or motivation. That's very interesting and in how you broke down things like um, influencing others, right? And, and so the question for you is, what made you change? Like at some point you realized and said, oh, I was wrong. Like some, something clicked there. Was it, you know, as you were talking with candidates, looking at resumes or just the day-to-day -day work, what made you change and now look for those, uh, you know, traits or, or those things into, into candidate resumes? I, 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 
I think what, what, what really made me change my mood or the way that I'm thinking is just by looking at others. So you look at good product managers and you look at, okay, well, what does this product manager do that makes him successful? But there's a flip side to this question, which is what doesn't this product manager do? And so I'll, I'll give you one example, which is talking on top of each other. Like a person would be talking and then immediately you'll start, you'll start talking and slamming him with, with words. Well, that doesn't signal collaboration. That doesn't signal that you really want to hear what the other person is saying. So what I've seen is bad product managers do that. Good product managers listen. And so just by noticing others, just by noticing how others carry themselves um, and looking at the good product manager versus the bad product manager made me start thinking a bit deeper into this and and classifying what, if I remove the metadata of this, what are the characteristics or the description of the person who um, could be a good product manager. That's really insightful. And it's also something that will start showing up in the interviews, right? It's something that okay. as an interviewer, you start picking up these little details that may seem, uh, you know, sometimes candidates don't pay enough attention to those little details, but they do matter because as a product manager is not about case questions. It's not all about, you know, market sizing. There are these little details on how you collaborate with others. And, and so we talked a little bit about the resume. Let me actually, you know, tell you a little bit about uh, the things that I've heard. So mm -hmm. a lot of people have approached me and said, Hey, please help me with my resume. I'm not hearing back from recruiters. Do you think that just by submitting the resume uh, to a company like Cisco or any other company, is that enough? Yeah. Uh, put yourself in a, a manager's role, right? Uh, a company like Cisco, there is a lot of people um, interested in coming into or becoming a product manager in Cisco. So think about that specific person. One day he or she has a million different things that they need to think of and close on. And all of a sudden they want to hire someone and they get a thousand resumes. Are they going to read every single resume? Sure as well. No, I guarantee that they're not going to read the thousand resumes. Well, and I'll, I'll I'll admit on this phone call or Zoom call that I don't read every single resume out there. I don't have the time for it. However, what I do, I do read some and I, but I do put more weight on the people that did the extra effort, which is trying to connect with someone inside the company and trying to um, basically create their brand or, or make the people inside the company aware that that specific person is interested and is fit for the job. Think about your influencers again. Try to get an influencer or, or um, a, a proponent inside the company to vouch for you. Um, this is something that I learned from B-School. Let me tell you, I sucked at it at first because I was like, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Why do I even need to network? Well, now when I'm on the other side, I can bet you know, that networking is very important. Make sure to network um, and, and do it genuinely. Don't just do it as, as, hey, I just networked and that's it. No, really try to learn uh, about the person that, that you're speaking with and see what um, would motivate them to submit your resume for an application. Yeah, I think as candidates, sometimes we spend so much time to, trying to get those keywords into our resume that we forget that on the other side, uh, there's a person that, that, you know, sometimes has 20,000 things to do and has just five seconds to read the resume, right? But if yeah. they can put a face or at least, you know, a voice, if it's a phone call to that resume, it definitely increases your chances to, to getting that interview, right? And then, then it's another story, but at least getting you know, your foot in the door is not just about the resume. A lot of people are also concerned that, hey, I may not have the background 
uh, to become a product manager right away, but I could be, you know, really good at marketing or operations or sales. Mm -hmm. and, and my question to you is, have you seen Cisco or, or at Cisco um, people transitioning into Cisco in another function and then becoming a product manager? Is that something that a company like Cisco, uh, you know, allows? And is it something that, you know, in general, you recommend the people who may not have that direct background or connection to product management? It, it, I've seen it. It definitely can be done. Um, like we said in the beginning, where you don't need to have an, an MBA to be a product manager. You just have to have the right skill sets. And so, yes, you could come from marketing, but you have the right skills to become a product manager. If you prove that one way or another, you may be fit for the role. And again, network with the people that you want to work with. Show them that you're interested. Show them that you can do the job. Um, how you would do that, try to volunteer for some stuff, try to go over and beyond what your task is. Um, and it's definitely possible. And I've seen that happen in Cisco and beyond Cisco. It goes back to, it's all about networking and, and making sure that you put that extra effort. So it's not just the keywords, it's not just the resumes. You have mm -hmm. to actually work for it one way or another, but it's always good to hear that companies like Cisco are willing to give that opportunity again with the networking and the right skills, but it's, you know, willing to give the opportunity for somebody to join Cisco and then become a product manager. All right, Omar. So that was awesome. Let me ask you one more question before we finish the interview. Um, now that you've been a couple of years out of the MBA, looking back, mm -hmm. what advice would you give yourself, you know, pre MBA or during your MBA, what advice would you give yourself if you wanted to apply to a product management role? Okay. So, so I'm laughing right now because listen, guys, I'm going to give you this advice. Listen, don't do the same mistakes that I did. Number one, networking is important. <laughs> Networking is very important, not just for the company, but also make sure to network with your student body or, or with your classmates. Um, I can't tell you um, how many people that I reach out to right now just for advice. These people I call my friends. Um, and I'd like to, as much as possible, let you know that expanding your friend list will be beneficial for you. Maybe not today, it will be beneficial for you in the future. So that's some, something that I would advise network for with companies for product management control, obviously, but also network with your colleagues or with your classmates that will advise you today and tomorrow. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, make sure to try out being a product manager if you don't have that kind of experience um, in the past. And when I say try out is volunteer, go volunteer. There's a ton of companies that need help, either con like a, a person consulting to them on what they should do um, or, or how to operate things. Try it out. Try to put it in your resume. Your resume will be much more impactful. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Omar. Uh, and again, thank you so much for, for being with us today. I, I, I hope everybody else out there uh, understands that it's important to network. It's important to put the effort. And there's plenty of opportunities, whether you want to apply just to a product management role or transition into a company and then become a product manager. Um, any last you know, words of advice for our viewers, Omar? Uh, yes, I would. Subscribe. Push the like button. Um, but no, in all honesty, like listen to these videos that Diego's sharing with you. They're going to help a lot. And, and to all our viewers out there, I'm going to say that this was absolutely not scripted. So thank you so much, Omar. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And thanks again for being with us. I hope everybody, you know, enjoyed this video and learned something new today. And we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>